Today we may be tempted to the dark side as we have a look at the Kotobukiya Artifacts Star Wars Emperor Palpatine with Royal Guard 3-Pack. This is a one-tenth scale pre-painted model kit and consists of three individual characters and two display stands to display them with. Let's grab some quick measurements. Both of the Royal Guards are exact copies to one another, so they stand at seven and a quarter inches in height. Meanwhile, Dark Emperor Palpatine will stand at seven inches in height. He's a little bit shorter than the two guards. For their display stands, they actually get two identical display stands to one another, these square matte finished black display bases. The underside we've got Lucasfilm made in China. Uh, the stands do not connect. However, theoretically you could have, like I did have at the beginning of this review, Pal Palpatine basically straddling over both display bases. I'll show you that in a second. Initially, I thought to myself, why wouldn't they have had this as one stand alone, literally stand alone, a display base, which was the full length of two connected together. Then it occurred to me, well, really, you could have them in several different configurations. If you want to, say, display solely Emperor Palpatine, well, you would have a display stand to do that. You could just have him standing on his own. You could also then have the same thing happening with him and one royal guard. Or, again, you can make use of both display stands and have the figures stretching across both of them. Each of the figures, by the way, have magnets on the undersides of their feet. I don't find, though, that Emperor Palpatine has a very strong magnetic attachment uh, to the display stand. Granted, if you are going to be having it on a flat surface, Palpatine's really not going to go anywhere. But by contrast, like I wouldn't be able to hold the base in place. However, by contrast, I can take any one of the Royal Guards, and it seems like their magnetic attachment is a little bit greater something to the point where you can have them, there you go, holding the stand upright. I'm not really sure if maybe it's just the placement of where the magnets are on the base itself. Maybe if you have Emperor Palpatine further back, it no, it still somewhat only holds it. But then again, like I said, you're only really going to be having these on shelving. There's no point in having something where, you know, you're not going to be tipping the figure up to, to have him holding on. So the fact that they at least Palpatine doesn't hold well to the display stand, doesn't bother me one bit. Going back to what I was saying though, you could take both display bases, let's go ahead and do those now, put them side by side and attach them as best you can. And then you can go ahead and take Palpatine, put him right in the middle, and have each of the Royal Guards on either side. This is likely how I'm gonna be displaying him because after all, like in the movie, you know, the Emperor's Royal Guards are going to be on either side of him, protecting him against any potential threats. Not to say that the Emperor can't hold his own, though. The other accessories, well, you get two identical of these to go with two identical Royal Guards. You get the actual staff batons. I'm not really sure the actual term for them, but they are a silver cast rod with black painted at the bottom area in which they would be held. Now, the way that the guards actually hold these, we go ahead and take one of them. They are carbon copies to one another. Instead of actually holding them this way, they hold them in which the staffs or the batons sit against their shoulders. 
There's nothing really magnetically attaching the two. It's simply by just resting them against the shoulder. And I have to admit, they hold relatively well. It's not to say that you would want to be rocking in any fashion, but it does seem to hold a little bit. Again, I don't think there's any sort of magnet whatsoever in the hand, but it does look good having both of them displayed with that. We'll go ahead and do it on the one side, and then we'll go ahead and take it on the other and just, again, fit it, resting it against the shoulder, and then just attaching it to the display base. You may find it even easier to to put them into their hands once you've got the guards in place because as you're laying it down against the surface of the of the actual display base they may actually fall over so it might just be easier if you put them down first then put the batons in place okay so let's get right down to the sculpt of these these are absolutely gorgeous pieces come to us from the folks over at Kotobukiya there is a little bit of assembly that's required on all three of the figures, some a little bit more than others. Palpatine actually requires the most assembly. What you need to do when you get them out of packaging is you have to install the head. It's basically just, let me just take it off here for a second so you can see. Uh, it's not magnetized, however, it is a shaped peg. So it'll tell you right off the bat, and if you also know uh, the way the human body works, you'll know that his head pegs facing forward. A couple of little assisting points as well. There's these peg holes on either side that line themselves up to these little peg notches, these little pegs sticking up from the bottom of his, of his hood here. So fit those on both sides. A little bit of pressure may be required. And then you've got the Palpatine's head in place. The shoulders work exactly the same way. These shoulders simply just unpeg. I thought maybe these might have magnets that are attaching them because it seems to have a pretty uh, quick fix quick insertion when it comes to these but I think it's just simply a case of just pegging them into place you can see right or R or it's simply just a case again the hands are going to be facing forward so that tells you right off the bat the other hand exactly the same way plug those into place and that's all you really require for Emperor Palpatine the face sculpt however on Palpatine is gorgeous if I could use the term gorgeous to describe this mangled mess, this scarred mess that is the Emperor. He has a great looking head sculpt, excellent looking paint that's been applied to all the little nooks and crannies. He's even got those yellowish colored eyes. The paint is really what delivers the strongest on this figure. I mean, it takes nothing away from the sculpt at all, but it's the paint that really resonates the best. And if you had a really good head sculpt, as I've mentioned before, a good sculpt in general, and you've had poorly applied paint, no matter how good that sculpt could be, the paint will let you down. And I have to admit, the paint does not let me down one bit here on Emperor's head. As we move our way further down the rest of his body, of course, he's got his go-to uh, robe, his somewhat Sith Emperor robe. Um, somewhat more matte or smoother texture on the interior. The exterior, though, has almost like this waffle sort of cross hatching sort of texturing to it it looks splendid the pose has him with one extended hand out perhaps luring young skywalker to the dark side the other hand on the other hand holds his staff in place there are his two magnets on the undersides of his feet like i said they, they are not the most strongest of magnets but again for the nature of where you're how you're going to be displaying them that's not really a big concern then we get to the Emperor's Royal Guards. We'll go ahead and take one off very carefully. I'll remove this just in case I wouldn't want that to fall over. Now I can spend a little bit more time with ease having a look at the statue here on the Emperor's Royal Guard. We'll look at one of them because really they are carbon copies to one another. They don't look like they are any different. Uh, assembly, the only assembly that's required on him, he's full head to toe, a one solid piece. At, at the very least, there's just assembly where you have to install the feet. It tells you left and right, but again, like, well, for starters, it's it's not going to go the opposite way. Uh, and then as well, I do find, like, when you are putting them in place, one obviously seems to fit a little bit better than the other. Like, this one does not fit into place. It doesn't have the proper shape. So one side is kind of more like a cornered off rectangle, and then the other one is more like the shape of an L. So it's absolutely foolproof. There's no way you're going to put the foot in the wrong place. Magnets on either side, so that will adhere itself to the display base. This figure, or this sculpt, again, is as equally good as the Emperor, though it doesn't have as much in the way of paint. It's primarily more so reds. 
I have a truthfully admitting I have a soft spot for the Emperor's Royal Guard because of all the things that I had for Star Wars toys back in the day I had a Scout Walker and I had an Emperor's Royal Guard I, that was my earliest introduction to Star Wars it's of the strangest things that you would be picking up in stores I'm gonna personally pick out when I was a kid I actually grabbed it off the pegs and I grabbed the Emperor's Royal Guard as my Star Wars figure to introduce me to the collection strange um, the detailing though on him is quite good the helmet is rather shiny uh, reflecting a really nice job of reflecting the light off of it the rest of the robe however is more of a matte finished red with some nice airbrushing in between the little creases so in between basically where the 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 robe overlaps itself or drapes over itself they've added some additional kind of dark shading there just to kind of bring that forward I didn't realize that his arms were a darker red, so I'd have to go back and check the source material. I wouldn't be able to check out my original Star Wars toy because that's been lost over the course of time. And then, of course, he's got his boots underneath, which also share a more dark cranberry, almost dark burgundy color here. The plus, really, to the statue is the fact that you're getting essentially three, three characters in which you can have them on display. And initially thinking, well, why didn't they change the stand to one standard singular stand, the full length? Again, it occurs to me later, well, it would be so that you can display them any which way that you want. So say if you want to just have Emperor Palpatine with one royal guard, or if you want to just leave the royal guards off altogether and display the emperor all on his own, you can do that with having two separate display bases. I feel as if even mighty young Skywalker would be tempted by the dark side trio here of the Emperor Palpatine and Royal Guard 3-pack. Uh, Kota Bakia has done a fantastic job, not only on the two side guards, but of, uh, of Emperor Palpatine himself. And I especially like the fact that they give you two display stands that are separate from one another. It allows you some customization, so if you want to just display Emperor on his own, you can do that. Or if you want to put the two stands together, you can display them like I've done here in Final Looks. Whether you are of more of the Jedi side or of the dark side, probably either will agree that this is an awesome release from Kota Bikia and will go well with the other Kota Bikia Star Wars releases that they're going to be coming out with in, uh, in the next couple of months or so. So if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you should be able to now find it at your local comic book store. And fear not, let's say if your, your local comic book store doesn't stock these, Nine times out of ten, they're more than happy to order these things in for you. A couple of weeks, and bingo bango, you can own the Emperor Palpatine and Royal Guard 3-pack in your own collection. Today, we were having a look, though, at the Kota Bikia Emperor Palpatine with Royal Guard 3-pack. This was the one-tenth scale pre-painted model kit. And they say model kits, but as you saw of the course of this review, there's really not too much that's required for assembly. You probably will be able to put it together in a few seconds, and you'll have this awesome display to put in your cabinet. If you guys want to uh, check out some more Kota Bikia reviews on this channel specifically, there is a Kota Bikia playlist. You can have a look at all the things that I've done leading up to this point, and all future Kota Bikia reviews will also be there as well. All of this as well, make sure you hit that little subscribe button. That's crucial, because then you'll never miss a beat when it comes to future videos. That's not a 100% guarantee, so make sure as well you head over to the main playlist, the main channel homepage, and scroll down the section that says videos. See if there's anything that you may have missed along the way. Future videos will be coming your way, guys, from Kota Pekia, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching. In the meantime, I'll see you guys next time.